this tutorial, we're going to look at using Simple Scraper and Parabola to scrape stats from MLB.com's StatCast. So you'll need a Parabola account and you will need the Simple Scraper Chrome extension, which you can install at simplescraper.io as seen here, and you can install it for free. So once you've got that set up, let's head over to MLB.com and I'm already on the StatCast page here. How you can find that just if you need to is mlb.com slash stats and then StatCast here. So I've gone through and added a couple of custom columns. We are going to scrape the stats for batters to determine which ones have the best net stolen bases in Major League Baseball, which is a stat category that could help you win your fantasy league this year. But don't worry if you know very little about baseball, this will still make sense as we'll just be doing a simple plus minus calculation and you'll get to see a bit of a data analytics type of example for web scraping. So we can see here that Loriano is at the top of the leaderboard for stolen bases, currently with eight, and he is leading the league. So we're gonna click on our simple scraper icon here. It's already been loaded into Chrome as an extension, and we'll click scrape this website. And you'll see that we're asked to add a property. So we're going to add a property that is player name. And now we can actually just scroll down here. And as you can see, the selection fields get highlighted in purple. So we can select the player name. And we can see that all 228, this is a pretty long list here if we keep scrolling down, all 228 players have been highlighted there. And uh, it's just that last name comma first name format. And then we are just focused on uh, stolen bases and caught stealing. So our stolen bases field is this SB field. So we can click that. And again, we get our 228 and our caught stealing field as well. We can click here, it's the CS field. And sometimes Simple Scraper will highlight a few extra fields and you just have to get rid of those. And so we have our 228 caught stealing as well. So now we can click view results. So here we can see, we can preview our data. So we have yep, the player name, first name and last name, the stolen bases, caught stealing. And there's this player name link field in here as well, which we'll be able to get rid of later on. So we're going to save this recipe and use it as an API to connect to Parabola. So if we just click save recipe, we will give this a name, net stolen bases, oh, we'll go with MLB just to make sure. Perfect, so we have MLB net stolen bases, we have player name, stolen bases, and caught stealing as our properties. And that's it, so we'll create this recipe. And our recipe has been created. So we can search for our recipe here, and we'll just need to run our recipe so that we have data here to connect to Parabola. Okay, great. So we can see that our recipe ran and we have all of our rows, our 228 rows, and we'll be using this API connection to connect with Parabola. So let's head over to Parabola and we're going to create a new flow. And let's give this a, the same title. So it was MLB net stolen bases. So 
that's going to be our new flow. This time we won't be able to use an integration because Parabola doesn't have a native integration for Simple Scraper, but that's okay because we can still use the API endpoint step to configure everything that we need. So we can click pull data from other apps and pull from an API. Oh, I So we can also rename this as pull from simple scraper, just so that we know where it's coming from. This is going to be a get request. So the request type is going to stay as a get request because we want to essentially get the data from Simple Scraper. And for our endpoint, we'll copy and paste from Simple Scraper. So we're going to copy and paste this. We're going to include the run now parameter so that every time this endpoint is called, it runs in it runs the recipe in Simple Scraper and doesn't use the old data. So we're going to toggle that on and then we'll just copy and paste the endpoint into Parabola here. Run now is set to true and our limit is set to 100. We're going to eat, increase this limit to 250 because we have 228 rows as is. So we'll give ourselves a little bit of a buffer there and set that to 250. And we want to make sure that our top level key, so at the bottom here, this top level key, well, let's hit show update results here and you'll see what I mean in just a second. And as you can see, it is pulling in the correct recipe from Simple Scraper, so our MLB net stolen bases. And as I mentioned, so what we want to make sure to do is we want our data. It's great to know that it's calling the right recipe, but we want those rows and columns for each of our batters. So now that we have our top level key selected, we'll click show updated results. Awesome. So now that we've refreshed our data, we have everything that we need. So we have our stolen bases, and then we have a few other fields that have been added in there from that API call. Great. Now we just need to clean this up a little bit get rid of a few columns, we can go from there. So let's drag in our column selector, select columns step here. We're going to keep it pretty simple and we're just going to keep a few columns. So we're going to keep player name, we're going to keep caught stealing, stolen bases, and the timestamp. And that's it. So as I'd mentioned, we had that player name link that got passed in through the API, but we don't need to keep that. I'm just going to keep player name, stolen basis, caught stealing, and the timestamp. So just four columns here. So we'll update those results. Perfect. So now we'll want to create a calculated column for net stolen bases. So as you can imagine, just like getting caught stealing isn't great in the real world, it's not great in baseball either. So every caught stealing value here, so every time a batter or a runner is caught stealing, you can think of it as a minus one. And every time they have a successfully stolen base, it's a plus one. So our net stolen bases, what we're looking for essentially are players with the best success rate or a positive net stolen bases number. Uh, so we can do the math in our head, for instance, for this first one for Loriano here. Uh, so there's eight stolen bases with only one caught stealing. So his net stolen bases is seven. So we have the eight minus one. And so what we want to do is just insert a math column. And we can add that to our canvas here. And we're going to give this column a name of net stolen bases. And it is a simple calculation. So we can use the curly braces here to identify or to bring in the value from one of our columns. And it's just going to be stolen bases minus caught stealing. 
so we can show those updated results. Now, if we scroll over, we can see our net stolen bases. And the key here with net stolen bases is that we want to be able to also see negative numbers. So we want to see if people are, uh, there we go, there's a negative number, a negative one. So people that are having, you know, more unsuccessful attempts than successful. So we want to be able to see those negative numbers. That's why we did stolen bases minus cost ceiling to get that net number there in our math column. We're going to reorder our columns just so that we can bring that net stolen bases right up to the front next to the player name because that's what we're most interested in for now. So we want player name at the top and then we're going to bring in our net stolen bases, total stolen bases, and then caught stealing and then our timestamp. Great, so we have net stolen bases, stolen, caught stealing, and our timestamp. And lastly, we're going to want to convert our timestamp from this Unix, this very large Unix number in our timestamp uh, to something a bit more friendly. So we can format the date. Let's open this up to see what we have. So the column to format is our timestamp column. Click the starting format and we can see that it is this version here of the Unix timestamp because I think it has 13 digits. So if we count how many digits we have here, I believe it's 13, it matches up. So it's actually doing milliseconds. And we want our new format to be day, month, year here. So just a little bit more friendly and we can show those updated results and it's not going to add a new column it's just going to format this current column uh, the timestamp column so perfect so we have a new timestamp here great so now that we know who our net stolen base leaders are we're going to send the data to Airtable to store it and we'll update it weekly and group by the player's name to see how they improve or if they get worse week to week. Let's drag in our Airtable step. And we're going to send to Airtable. And we'll need to authorize Airtable. So while this is authorizing, we can head on over to Airtable to configure our table. So as you can see, I've added columns for uh, player name, which is a number column. Uh, or sorry, not a number column, a single text uh, column for player name and then number columns for net stolen bases, stolen bases and caught stealing. And then our timestamp field, again, is just a single line text. We can keep it that way so that we'll be able to reference the dates as we add more rows to the database each week when we update it. So let's head back over to Parabola to configure our Airtable step. Okay, now that Airtable's authorization has gone through, we can just map our table to Parabola. And again, it's always convenient if these have the same names. Um, so it's just easier for you to reference when you are in these steps and mapping them out. We can click show updated results here. And we should see everything that will be sent over to Airtable. Perfect, so we have all of our rows and our data that we're looking for, stolen bases, caught ceiling net, and our timestamp. Awesome, so let's run this flow and head over to Airtable and see what we get. Great, everything got sent over and we have everybody, awesome. So what we can do now is instead of, so previously in another video, we did a starter flow where we would delete what was in the table from the previous day or the previous time it ran to update and refresh the listings or the data by completely deleting the table and then uploading that new data. In this case, what we wanna do is we actually wanna keep this data and just add a new record 
each week and group by the player name. So if I go to group, I can group by player name. And then now next week, when we run this flow again, if Jose Abreu here, if he has another stolen base or, you know, anything that gets added, then we'll be able to get that new timestamp and see where his net stolen bases are compared to this week from next week. So we're actually just going to leave the database as it is and just keep updating it and grouping by player name so we can see how they're doing as time goes on by looking at the timestamp and grouping by uh, the player name. You could also undo the grouping at any time and instead, you know, just sort by the net soul basis to see who the leaders are, to see who's, you know, not doing so well, the minuses, or to see who's doing great, uh, like Loriano there. To set a schedule for our flow, we'll head back into Parabola and in scheduling rules here, we'll add the rule and we'll go to once per day. We only want to run it once a week, so let's say Sunday. So we'll actually just click Sunday, unclick everything else, and we'll run it on Sunday evenings to capture the games for that day and then just save that rule. Awesome. So now we have brought in data from MLB.com's StatCast using Simple Scraper and transform that data with Parabola and sent it over to Airtable so that we can dominate our fantasy leagues thanks to these tools.